Uh, today's talk is on uh, the planetary nodes, the south and north nodes of all the planets. And um, again, uh, I like it uh, when you have questions to ask me your questions uh, as they occur. And uh, what you're going to be doing today is covering a lot of material. Uh, I want to try to approach it uh, quite slowly and yet uh, very thoroughly. So that hopefully, uh, at the end of the day, you will have a very working and practical knowledge of how to apply this uh, to your chart. And for those that are working as astrological counselors, how you can apply it for your clients. The topic and subject of planetary nodes in astrology, of course, uh, has not really been focused on by too many people. Uh, it tends to be a rather rare and or abstract uh, idea for most. And yet, when you develop an understanding and a way of applying the north and south nodes of the planets to the birth chart, you will uncover a depth of information that would not otherwise be obvious. Um, it just fills in the blanks, so to speak. Uh, particularly for those that um, are in fact interested in what we can call evolutionary astrology, uh, which assumes the issue of lives prior to the one that we're currently living. Now the point here is that <clears throat> past lives, uh, wherever they were, whatever occurred, do in fact uh, constitute a tremendous level uh, of subconscious memory that exists within the Iranian component of our consciousness. And the point there is that uh, Uranus uh, being the higher octave of Mercury correlates to what's called long-term memory, whereas Mercury itself is short-term memory. But uh, from that point of view, uh, long-term memory extends back into other lifetimes. And it's a very, very important issue because a simple example, uh, how many of us can remember in total detail what we did two weeks ago? So the question becomes, where do these memories go? And the point is that they go to the Uranian component of our consciousness what in Jungian terms is called the individuated unconscious. <clears throat> Again, this means content unique to you as a person, or what Freud, Freudian psychologists call the subconscious. And the point there is that long-term memory, whether you can have a short-term mem short memory recall or not, subconsciously, or its conditioning, does condition your approach to your immediate reality. A simple example, uh, a child gets sexually abused as a child, uh, the memories are suppressed, and these memories operating in the Iranian element of consciousness, conditioning the person's psychological reality as an adult. So the point here is that we all have these past life memories, but for most of us, they're held in an absolutely unconscious state. Again, most of us can't remember in total detail we did what we did two weeks ago, but the memories are there. And it's just, it's for those that are meditators, by the way, this is exactly the element in your consciousness that you will access at some point to have spontaneous past life memory. It's the area that the hypnotherapists access for therapeutic reasons, to recover suppressed or forgotten memories. So the bottom line in this point is that these memories, past life, in total condition your orientation to your existing reality in ways that you're not cognizant or conscious of. See the point. So this is one of the reasons of trying to embrace and include uh, this area of astrology 
within your overall chart understanding, chart analysis. The north and south nodes of any planet relative to the natal planet itself, i.e. south node of Venus, north node of Venus, Venus itself, specifically correlates with the spiritual law that we call the Trinity. The Trinity, Triton, uh, past, present, future, and that once we exist in a reality of time based on past, present, future, we then have the phenomena that we call evolution, and we have the universal experience, all of us have the universal experience, of what is called the dynamic tension that exists between the past and the future as experienced in the moment. All of us have this tension. And the point here within this is that, in an unfortunate way, we all tend to project our past into the future. The future, again, is simply an abstract and can only be actually known from the point of view of the past. And because it's an abstract and a literal unknown, this is why we project our past to the future, which is exactly why most of us keep recreating our past into the future. So you can then see, perhaps from this point of view, how incredibly important it can be to understand the dynamics that have come before. The obvious intention of any of us, any soul on earth, is to stop compulsively recycling our past. <laughs> it's the ultimate recycler. And to at some point uh, break free from this stuff. Obviously at the point in time that we're living now, <clears throat> as a collective soul, we're obviously now moving into the transition of the ages between Pisces and Aquarius. And the opportunity, uh, when the ages go into transition, they hope the opportunity is for the past to stop repeating itself, to complete, completely break free in order to allow new paradigms of reality to occur. And yet this is very, very difficult to do because to embrace the future 100% is to embrace 100% insecurity. How many of us like to feel insecure? Now I do. <laughs> now you do. <laughs> Good. <laughs> So, but the fact is that most folks uh, at this point in the human epic don't want to feel insecure. Which is exactly why all over the earth right now there is so much uh, extreme movement uh, politically, economically, to re-embrace the past, not the future. And if you examine the nature of history, at no point has the past stopped recycling itself. At no point. So we even know this is an opportunity and a hope. It remains just that. <laughs> so, now, the nodal, the nodal axis, <clears throat> As we said yesterday, has extreme power. <clears throat> and as we suggested yesterday, the Greek astrologers uh, understood everything from mathematical value, mathematical power. And the highest powers that the Greek astrologers assigned to any symbol in astrology was the nodal axis. That should give us a clue to something. So, well, one of the things we'll be doing today is going through a very specific case history, 
It's a natural case history of former client to make these ideas real as we go. You can perhaps see at the moment, uh, just on a symbolic visual level, uh, if we look at the amount of emphasis this chart has by placing in the nodal axes, you see this tremendous emphasis between second and eighth house. Cancer Capricorn. And if we if we erase these, not not to have them on the board, you're not going to be seeing the same emphasis. That should be suggesting something to you right away. Now, the first thing we want to talk about is this fact that relative to the outer planets, <clears throat> all of us on Earth, every one of us in this room, will have the south and north nodes, the Pluto, the Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune, all in the same signs. Now this has a direct collective meaning. In terms of if we look at life from the point of view of a collective soul, remembering that it takes more than one person to accomplish the evolutionary intentions for the planet, which is why we are born in what is called waves, waves like a wave on the ocean. And yet, even though these outer planets are all in the same signs for us, the nodes. They also have an individual application by the actual house, houses, that are located in each birth chart. So here again we see the linkage between the collective and the individual. This is made even more specifically individual by determining the actual house and sign of the planet itself. And what you have here again is a linkage to the idea we call the Trinity. When you look into a birth chart, uh, you have a south and north node of any specific planet. And this, that symbol itself is showing you the transition between past and future. It's in a continuous state of tension and or becoming. The planet that is the ruler of those nodes in the natal chart is the area, uh, the dynamics, the archetypes, to which the individual consistently integrate this transition between the past and the future in the context of this life. You understand this idea? It's very, very important to understand. Here again you have the issue of the Trinity. So, from a collective point of view, It's very, very interesting to examine the fact that starting from the soul itself, that we all have south node of Pluto, every one of us in Capricorn. And that for most people alive today, this will be taking place roughly from 15 to 22 degrees of Capricorn. Now think of this for a moment. Over these last few years, uh, we've had this, uh, let's use the word interesting transit, of Neptune and Uranus moving through Capricorn. And within the last few years, this transit has conjuncted the south node of Pluto for all of us. Now think of this symbolism. What does it mean? The, the bottom line issue is Capricorn. And what we're looking at here is how Capricorn structurally defines our sense of reality. What we think is reality. Saturn is a conditioning aspect to reality. Anytime you're born into any life, You'll be born into a certain country, a certain parents, to tell you what reality is. Structurally speaking, 
rights and wrongs, social conventions, social norms, social taboos, laws, regulations, procedures, called reality. And all of us have experienced in these last few years this interesting transit of Neptune Uranus <laughs> in conjunct this thing. And what you're, what you're looking at relative to the transition of the ages <coughs> is that each individual within these last few years has been necessarily confronting what they have considered to be reality. Neptune has been trying to dissolve the structure of reality that we have considered to be real. Uranus has been trying to liberate from reality. When you put Uranus to Capricorn, the simple picture is to put a hand grenade in a steel box. The steel box is Capricorn. The hand grenade is Uranus. And despite how much Capricorn wants to hang on to resist, in the end, the hand grenade wins. It's very similar to a, a bomb going off on the Earth, making a gigantic explosion. All kinds of Earth is blown, blown into the air and falls back to Earth with a brand new pattern. So, in effect, what has been occurring for most of us is that there has been an absolute transition in our personal realities in which we experience our own inner hand grenade, so to speak. And the pieces are coming back to Earth in new ways that we can barely recognize. You understand the point? Which is exactly why so many people all over the earth can't even control their sleep patterns. <coughs> why so many people all over the earth are finding thoughts flying in their brain in which they don't even know the origin of. Thoughts that for many, many people from the point of view of Capricorn seem so Uranian radical from the point of view of their existing Saturnian reality has been responsible for all over this earth the people experiencing a collective despair, a collective depression, a collective angst, and a progressive loss of meaning, a meaning that was associated with prior reality. Do you understand the point? And yet most people have a fear of embracing these new thoughts. And most people in desperation try to re-secure that box that hand grenade lives within. All you have to do is examine the nature of what is going on on our Earth to understand the nature of this transit on the south node of Pluto. Look at the absolute level of polarization that is taking place all over this earth, politically, economically. And yet at the very same time we have Neptune, which is trying to show the soul that we are in fact absolutely interlinked and interrelated, which is exactly why the world, Saturn, has become incredibly internationally dependent upon itself. To understand the point here, which is exactly why you suddenly have here in Europa uh, treaties trying to make a one Europe to break down the Saturnian boundaries and borders. And yet, simultaneous to this, you have the fear called Capricorn nationalism. Oh, I'm not going to be Dutch anymore, I'm not going to be Danish anymore, I'm not going to be Swedish anymore. Do you see the point? 
and how this kind of delusive fear emanating from the individual ego can then in and of itself undermine Capricorn. This necessary actualization of new political and economic paradigms that will change our orientation to Saturnian reality. Do you see how this is provable by actual factual reality? So this is occurring collectively, it's occurring individually. You have to remember from the point of view of Uranus, we are dealing with the nature of the collective brain. Uranus correlates with our brain and the structure of our brain. We have to remember that the ultimate source of creation, Neptune, which we call God, as it was projected through time-space reality, Capricorn, the vehicle of the projection was electrical. The very nature of our brain is electrical. When you put Neptune Uranus to the south node of Pluto and Capricorn, it simply means that the collective brain at a soul level is being structurally changed. We all have little radio receivers inside. We have been picking up messages from sources beyond ourself. Messages that reflect a Uranian future. This is exactly why, how many people in the last few years have experienced problems in their sleep patterns? So the question becomes, why? Uh, if you examine it from the point of view of Neptune, Neptune has a direct connection to what is called the pineal gland in the brain. The pineal gland secretes a key hormone. Hormones, by the way, in astrology correlate with Pluto. All hormones do. And uh, the, this pineal gland secretes a hormone called melatonin. Melatonin's function in consciousness is to dissolve the Saturnian boundary between subjective or, or, or egocentric consciousness and soul consciousness. It is meant to spiritualize consciousness. And when you run Uranus through Capricorn with Neptune, you now have an increasing amount of electrical energy within the brain. And that electrical energy is focused on the pineal gland, Uranus, Neptune in such a way as to be secreting a dominant amount of melatonin, which is responsible then for the disruption in sleep patterns. The pineal glands control sleeping pattern. And this is happening for what reason? To receive the Uranian messages from the ultimate creator that are showing us not only the freer future for each of us as an individual, but the collective future. So we're all being seeded with these thought impulses. But from the point of view of Saturnian reality, they can seem, Uranus, too radical. Not able to integrate in my current Saturn reality. They initially appear as fragmented. They're not whole thoughts. They're not ABC-like. They're the famous Uranian snapshot, which is why it's so easy to resist. Do you see my point? So all of us have been going through this is the point. And there's a reason for it. And how come at this point in time it has a direct connection for all of us to the south node of Pluto? Now is this coincidence? Or somehow linked with synchronicity? Now at the deepest possible level, <clears throat> we go back to where we started. <sighs> South node in any relative to any planet correlates with what we call the past. What has come some, something that has come before this life. Now you can see not only the south node of Pluto in Capricorn but the south node of Saturn is in Capricorn and the south node of Jupiter is in Capricorn for all of us. 
So what does this directly mean? What are we all, all doing here with these symbols in our birth parts? What is the past that we are collectively connected to? Every human being on the planet right now. Hmm? Oh, just hang on a second. Um, what is the collective implication here, is my point. And how come for all of us we have a north node of these planets in Cancer? And how does this link now with these transits, Neptune Uranus? What is the deeper issues here? What we will find out, and this is where it can be a bit difficult because um, most of you in this room are not going to have a direct working knowledge of how the different signs uh, correlate with different times in past life, or the different ages, and so forth. Um, for those that want to <coughs> really develop themselves spiritually, that knowledge will come. So it, it will be a little bit difficult today because um, uh, for some reason I happen to have this knowledge, but uh, it's very hard to teach. <laughs> oh yeah, well you can memorize all this now, yeah? And, I mean, history is vast and complex. So I can only share with you uh, what I happen to know about this. So. The bottom line with Capricorn and Cancer is this, that this specifically correlates in history to the time frame at which the transition between the matriarchy and the patriarchy took place. Now think of this statement. When the transition between the matriarchy, meaning that which preceded the patriarchy, the transition between those and the patriarchy began. And think of this as a imprint, subconscious memory, that exists within our collective soul right now. And how this deepest unconscious <coughs> imprint has been activated relative to the Neptune-Uranus transit. The simplest way to, 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 to illustrate this, there are many countries now on Earth that are being run by women that 10 years ago could not have been. Places like Pakistan, as an example. Places like Turkey, as an example. A few years ago, the Philippines. And so forth. And the last election in the U.S., it was called the, the Year of the Woman, because all, the, all kinds of women were being elected to political office. So how does this then connect, historically speaking, to the fact that we all have South Node, collective soul, in Capricorn, and this directly connects to the last transition between the matriarchy and the patriarchy. Does this seem somehow synchronistic or just pure coincidence? Which way does it seem to you? <laughs> Anybody want to choose a pure coincidence? The deeper issue, beyond these obvious facts, is to understand that the way reality, Saturn, Capricorn, was lived and understood when the matriarchy was in place for hundreds of thousands of years, was in fundamental opposition, diametrically opposed to how reality was understood and lived once the patriarchy was successful in becoming the patriarchy. It's like looking at the difference between night and day. When the matriarchy was in place, 
everything was defined and lived through what we can call natural law. The laws that are self-evident within the whole context of nature. Versus, via the patriarchy, man-made laws we call religion. These are two different universes. <coughs> now, the point is that nature, or natural law, speaks for itself. I don't need a religion as an example to tell me it is not correct uh, to, to uh, not have my child run around on the autobahn. I inherently know that this is wrong to do. It is natural law. You see my point. Now, there's many ways to illustrate that point. But this is very, very different than man-made law, man-made religions. When the patriarchy began to take over, <clears throat> it began to suppress natural law. It began to control natural law. This sounds like Capricorn stuff, huh? Which then became the basis of judgment, negative judgments, relative to natural law. This means that all of us, by the sheer fact of having South Node of Pluto in Capricorn, South Node Saturn Capricorn, South Node Jupiter Capricorn, have been dragging around for roughly 5,000 years now a truckload of guilt. Capricorn. And what is this guilt caused by? It is caused by judgment patterns. Judgments that are issued from man-made religions relative to natural law which had preceded the patriarchy. Now remember, the archetype and dynamic of judgment is in fact intrinsic to consciousness. You cannot remove it from your brain. The issue is what is the inner basis that an individual uses to formulate judgment. Is that inner basis being determined through man-made religions? Or is the basis being determined relative to natural laws? Do you see the point here? So, <coughs> to show you just historical fact, when the matriarchy was in place, relative to having children, there was no nuclear family. Children were raised communally, by all men and all women. Now, do you think that's existing anywhere on earth today? How come? What happened? When the matriarchy was in place, there was no such thing called a monogamous relationship for hundreds of thousands of years. This is how life was being naturally lived. Now, all of a sudden, since relative to the patriarchy, we've had the issue of property, possession, and control. How come? What's the impact? You understand her. For hundreds of thousands of years, certain women within the matriarchy would initiate the male children at puberty into sexuality. This was done for hundreds of thousands of years. Because woman was literally considered to be an embodiment of the goddess. The sexuality is understood to be literally making love with God. When this became suppressed relative to the patriarchy, the religions, over great lengths of time, 5,000 years, the suppression of this natural law is in fact a causative factor in what we call modern sexual abuse of children. Anything that is natural and suppressed becomes distorted. 
Now I realize that some of these thoughts will be Uranian right now, radical. They may shock and offend you. But that's exactly what is happening and the purpose of this transition between the Pisces and the Aquarian age. You understand? What I'm sharing with you today is historical fact, not my opinion. Hmm? There was a certain point in history. And the children uh, were, I, I, I saw them, they were very um, unhappy with my father, and um, they were like that because the, the, the head of the sect uh, uh, thought he was God himself. There was David Cornish, what are you talking about? Are you talking about David Cornish? I, I'm not sure. There's a Waco thing in the US? Yeah, yeah, but what you're looking at in your example is a group of people living in a very distorted fashion defined by patriarchal law that had become distorted in horrible ways. We had an individual representing himself as a de facto messiah or a Jesus Christ type figure at a patriarchal level. This is quite the antithesis of the matter. You're absolutely right, because when things were done communally in these ways, there was no such thing as emotional, attach emotional attachment. And because there was no emotional attachment, there was no insecurity. Once things became nuclear relative to the patriarchy and the need for possession and property, that was the causative factor, an emotional insecurity because of attachment. Now, when we talk about this transition, you're not going to wake up tomorrow and suddenly find a matriarch in place and all is wonderful. It's not going to happen this way. <laughs> so, <of> course, <laughs> we're talking about a process that will be underway for 2,000 years here. It will take a while for the consciousness to catch up and to reintegrate in these ways. <coughs> Uh, we're just, right now, we're just kind of talking philosophically and astrologically and so on and show you where things come from. So, one of the messages by having these Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter with the North Nodes in Cancer, think of this now, is to, relative to evolution, it literally means <clears throat> to go backwards in order to go forwards. That's the intention of the cardinal archetype. We've all learned the cardinal, the cardinal archetype <clears throat> in order to embrace change. <clears throat> Walks two steps forward and then one step back because it freaks out at the change. So what it means at the deepest level is if we go back to recover the original imprint, the actual origin of the species, defined for hundreds of thousands of years relative to the matriarchy, we will then go forwards. But we will go forwards in a new way. 
we're not going to go back to, in quotes, primitive living where we're digging roots out of the ground. Unless it turns out that there may be some major environmental catastrophe that in fact may demand that. Which in fact is a distinct possibility. We'll get more into that when we talk about why we all have the South Node of Uranus and Sagittarius. What does that now mean when the, as now the, the happy Pluto transit marches ever closer <laughs> to this collective pump? And what that's actually going to mean? The whole issue of what we call natural law, the truths that are self-evident within nature itself, that whole archetype is Sagittarius. Nature, which in our time frame is called Gaia, G-A-I-A. The point here is that the totality of nature from the point of view of consciousness, is entirely conscious. It was only from the point of view of Judaism and the invention of the Garden and Eden myth that we developed the doctrine of the human organism being superior to nature. And therein lies the doctrine of dominating nature with the belief system that nothing within nature except the human being is somehow conscious. This is an absolute contradiction and violation <coughs> to natural law. What we call consciousness, and consciousness, by the way, is a phenomenon through astrology, is Neptune, the phenomenon of consciousness. Consciousness permeates the totality of creation everywhere simultaneously. That's what the great avatar Yogananda used to call lifetrons, subatomic particle that permeates the very essence of the structure we call creation, consciousness. That being the case, how could anything within nature not be conscious? The only real issue here and the difference is a consciousness that is self that is self aware that it is conscious. The self awareness of consciousness within a rock is not as evolved as a consciousness in a human organism relative to self awareness. But the fact remains that it is conscious. How ancient peoples long ago understood the nature of truth was to unite consciousness with the totality of consciousness within nature. Meaning each consciousness has its own unique truth and understanding of the totality of creation. And by uniting consciousness with various forms of consciousness this way, consciousness expanded. It was at one with nature. <laughs> It used to be called the Golden Age. But what has now happened? Relative to the invention of called Judaism by men, <laughs> we not only had the invention, basically, of the psychology we call sadomasochism. Why? In this myth, what is suggested? That woman, is the cause of all negative and evil phenomena on earth. Woman is the cause. The opposite of when the matriarchy was in control. At this point in time, <clears throat> woman was then presented as the temptation for man's spiritual downfall. Why? She just happened to embody the world of the senses and flesh and sensuality. And all of a sudden these group of men decided that somehow there was an intrinsic conflict between the world of senses and spirit. 
and that in order for spiritual growth to occur, we had to, Capricorn, suppress the world of the senses. And since woman embodied the world of the senses, uh uh-oh. And this is the famous Garden of Eden bullshit. Well, all of a sudden, a woman is made, made to feel guilty for being the temptress for man's spiritual downfall. And man, because in the myth, because man gave in <coughs> to the temptation, this is the origin of his own guilt. Capricorn shit uh, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> When all this became perverted in this way, the woman made to feel guilty simultaneously then needed to atone for that guilt, to purify it. When you have atonement linked with guilt, you make masochism. Man, feeling guilty by giving in to the temptation, created anger. When you have anger linked with guilt, you have the pathology of sadism. Think of this fact, and how this myth, since its invention, has created and led to reality as we know it since that time. The simplest, simplest, simplest example of this point in this time is man and woman doing the same job and woman making less. In this myth, you are taught that man is superior to woman. So now you have the doctrines of superiority and inferiority, dominance and submission. Woman now being considered to be a she- just a piece of property for the man to control and to possess. And it still permeates the Western psyche to this day in ways that most of us don't even recognize anymore. Now, does this sound to you like this is a form of natural law or something invented by human beings called men? Do you understand the point here? And of course, the related consequence is the human organism dominating nature relative to being superior to it. Now look where this doctrine, look at how this doctrine has created what we see on our planet today. As nature is beginning to react to the falseness of this doctrine, you have a complete increasing fracturing of the atmosphere relative to the ozone layer, relative to increasing levels of radiation impacting on this earth. You have an increasing pollution of all water systems on the planet. You have increasing pollution everywhere on this planet. You have increasing, an increasing phenomenon called, uh, how do you say, you know when things become like bigger deserts, there's more deserts, things are drying up. And this is in an accelerated state all over the planet. Just this last winter, what happened here in your country relative to the floods? What happened throughout most of Europe relative to increasing water levels? What happened last year in the United States when the Mississippi River did its thing? What happened here in Japan as these earthquakes become ever more? I mean, we could go on and on and on. My point here is that nature, as Pluto moves to Sagittarius, will progressively react (coughs) to this doctrine 
comes back to the point of Gaia. Nature is fully conscious. And when, when Pluto goes to Sagittarius, there will be an increasing need for nature to rebalance itself in order to have any sense of integrity. Uh, it's no different, uh, like a few years ago I lived in a place where the rabbit population was out of control. And every seven years, because of this fact, the male part of the rabbit population, every seven years, would create a sexual disease that did not allow it to reproduce so that the species could be minimized. The same point, if we step back from Earth uh, and observe Earth like we're looking at it through a microscope, the human organism would appear like a cancer cell in the human body. And just like the human body will isolate a cancer cell in order to survive, similarly, nature will isolate any organism that is out of balance within it in order to sustain its integrity. And this will become accelerated with Pluto's movement to Sagittarius. Uh, over the next 15, 20 years, there will be a great polarization within societies all over Earth one group understanding these points in such a way that the new religion universally will be literally called environmentalism. And at the same time, you'll have another group of idiots trying to sustain Capricorn the past. And this will be a division line throughout all governments everywhere. depending who prevails, will determine the collective outcome within nature. So what does this have to do with the fact we all have South Node Uranus inside the terrace? A moment ago we suggested Uranus correlates with long-term memory relative to the individuated unconscious that we all have in our brain. Now given this fact, and remembering that Sagittarius specifically connects to what we call intuition. It directly connects to what we call truth. Now, the point I'm trying to make, if something is true, whether we like to hear it or not, if it's true, it's true. So, here we all sit with Uranus and South Node of Sagittarius, listening to words coming from some speaker, reflecting something that could happen in the future relative to something that occurred in the past. And these messages may not be, we may, may not like to hear them, but by the sheer fact we all sit here with South Node and Sagittarius, relative to Uranus, we're intuiting and understanding the truth of these words, whether we want to hear it or not. This is my point. So this means a deliberation. For every human being on Earth, deliberation, allowing for movement into the future, is to re-embrace an origin of our own soul. Meaning every human being on the planet at this point in time has lived when the patriarchy, the matriarchy was in place as an original imprint, an original orientation of reality that was defined by natural law. South Node Aquarius, Sagittarius. Every one of us. Now, do you think that this is coincidence or synchronicity as we move towards the Uranian age that is coming and what is necessary for that age to manifest in a positive way? <coughs> you see the point here? Is this making sense? Any questions on this point? Manifestation of Saturn and Capricorn. The positive manifestation of Saturn and Capricorn. 
You don't like uh, the consensus. You don't like uh, the patriarchy. I don't like what? <laughs> patriarchy. No, no, you're making an assumption that I don't like this and that. I'm describing facts in a very Iranian objective way. That there should be rules and regulations, a structure in your life. There's no question about this. The question is, what is the nature of those rules, regulations, and structures? Are they in relationship to natural law or relationship to man-made law? I don't need a religion to tell me not to put my baby on the autobahn. <laughs> uh, what is the um, uh, <laughs> the, uh, there's a, a cycle of, of things. Mm. And, cycle, uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, how long does the, the note uh, take to go around? And what was in time so long ago? The outer, this on this the outer, has been before. On it's the outer been. planets, the cycle is very, very long. Yeah. Whole century. Yes. On the inner planets, it's much more quick. We're going to show the relationship between the inner planets and the outer today. Any other question? Yeah. Hmm? What is going on with the human race? Is it going on with the animal and the plant world? This woman is asking an extremely important question. And the question is, what's going on within the human race? Is this somehow reflected in animal life, the world of nature? Yeah. Um, the answer is yes, but primarily at a bacterial level viral level and an alteration in the genetic code in all forms of life as we have an increasing amount of radiation Pluto entering our atmosphere altering the genetic codes in all forms of life because of that increasing radiation the simplest example for this truth is what we call viruses like AIDS this is a direct reaction to this fact Right now in the United States, one out of five U.S. citizens has TB in their lungs. One out of five. And that's because this particular bacteria, relative to two things, allopathic drugs and increasing radiation, has mutated, as Pluto's been in Scorpio. Scorpio has everything to do with the genetic coding in all forms of life. Scorpio has everything to do with viruses and bacteria. Scorpio has everything to do with mutation and metamorphosis. The polarity point of Scorpio is Taurus. As we talked about it yesterday, Taurus is the instinct in all forms of life to survive. So even at a bacterial, viral level, these forms of life have been mutating in order to survive relative to these two things, radiation, strong drugs. And all of a sudden we have things like AIDS. We have things like a mutating bacteria called TB. This to me is a deeper danger for the future because TB is spread through casual contact, the atmosphere we all share atmosphere in astrology correlates with Uranus. Now look at as Pluto is marching towards our collective south node of Uranus being in Sagittarius. And now we have Uranus, Neptune transit moving towards Aquarius. As Pluto goes to Sagittarius, do you see the potential probability? My point is that these are ways of nature's reactions to make us pay attention there's two kinds of evolution, and Pluto correlates with evolution. There's cataclysmic evolution, and there's Darwin's notion of uniformity, slow progressive change. Pluto correlates with choice making. What choices do we make? What kind of evolution is determined based on those choices? Uh, are, are being changed. There is, there is manipulation. And I don't think that that will stop. 
I share your concern. That is man playing God. Mm -hmm. And this whole issue of genetic splicing and genetic alteration occurred, started, when Pluto began its transit in Scorpio and Neptune Uranus went to Capricorn. This is literally the symbol of the patriarchy playing God. Hmm? It will be healed in uh, the most dramatic news recently, relative to an example of AIDS, for the very first time, this is not a story coming out of New York State, uh, a baby was born five years ago that had AIDS, that was contracted in the womb relative to the mother who had AIDS. And, uh, for five years, this baby's been struggling for life, and uh, within the last few weeks, they have now determined that this baby's own immune system has evolved, mutated in such a way as to now have purged Pluto, that virus, from its system. That's the first case in history. And this is another example of this point of allowing nature, natural law, to prevail versus this man-made delusion. Do you see the point? And this is to me one of the greatest hopes, the, one of the wonderful things about the human organism, it really comes under the archetype of mutability, to be mutable, which means adaptability. One of the great survival instincts in the human organism is the capacity to adapt to ever-changing circumstances. The only organism that has greater adaptability is the world of the insects. Insects. Bugs. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, let's have a little happy break here and we'll come back and talk about more. <laughs> Good, we're all perfectly clear. <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay. Um, now another thing we need to uh, speak about relative to the fact we have collective South Node Uranus and uh, Sagittarius. Now that Pluto comes through transit to Sagittarius, it has everything to do with the nature of what we call belief systems. Belief systems. Let's remember that Sagittarius, <clears throat> Jupiter, and the ninth house directly correlate to the archetype in human consciousness that makes us aware that we are connected to something much larger than just the Earth itself. They were connected to a thing we call the universe, or the cosmos, by the sheer fact that creation was set in motion, and it exists in and of itself. There is an intrinsic or inherent truth <coughs> that will explain the nature of that creation. This awareness and human consciousness occurs through the Sagittarian ninth house Jupiter archetype and therefore becomes the basis of belief systems of a metaphysical, cosmological, philosophical, or religious level. Belief systems determine how any person interprets interprets reality. And how we interpret reality then is telling us, according to our interpretation, of what is true and not true. So, here we all sit with South Node Uranus in Sagittarius, and now Pluto comes towards Sagittarius. Clearly the implication 
is that every human being on earth will have their belief systems challenged, confronted, Pluto. And now in the last analysis, this transit, because again, Pluto is a phenomena of evolution, which occurs in one of two ways, cataclysmic or not cataclysmic. Evolution always leading to metamorphosis, that is to say, a growth of reality. So, <clears throat> since Sagittarius has everything to do with the nature of natural law, natural laws, in the last analysis, the bottom line, what you are really looking at is that every human being on earth, unless their belief systems are already in harmony with natural law, will be experiencing a tremendously intense confrontation of those existing belief systems. And therefore, how we're interpreting reality will be fundamentally confronted. Now this is a, a very, very important point to understand. <coughs> Belief systems for the hu human organism make the human organism feel secure. Let's remember that the Sagittarius archetype is naturally in conjunct cancer. You can see the implied crisis that's on the way with respect to our security structures linked with our belief systems. You understand the point? Now, again, nature, as it erupts uh, in increasingly intense ways, will have a direct cause in changing the nature of belief systems. We will have no choice, Pluto. At this point in evolution relative to the human epoch, um, these changes are not going to be occurring through some instant collective enlightenment. It will occur through what's called circumstantial necessity, in which the human organism has no Plutonian choice but to change. You understand the point here? So this will be one element of it. And the potential for these, let's use the word, earth events, can reach a magnitude that will actually potentially threaten the survival of the human species itself. That's how intense it could become. Remembering that Pluto has everything to do with what we call radiation, It has everything to do with what's called nuclear energy. It has everything to do with what's called the atom bomb, not a nuclear bomb. <coughs> now what happens when you put, put this natural archetype in the context of the archetype we call nature? What is one of the potential ways nature will erupt relative to Pluto radiation issues? Now this would potentially impact the survival of the species. Sagittarius is also in conjunct Taurus, the survival of the species. Now, the point within this is that when you study history, the last time 500 years ago, when Pluto was in Sagittarius, and Neptune and Uranus were then in Aquarius. This directly correlated <coughs> with a massive migration of peoples all over this planet. It correlated with what was then called the discovery of new worlds. As the European people got on their happy boats, and discovered places like America, the South Pacific Islands, and there are all this new world discovery. 
And right then and there you can see the transmigration of belief systems. As the white person attempted to impose their view of religion upon these natural cultures that they progressively dominated. It's a historical fact. Now, if you deal with this one idea, the discovery of new worlds, on the level of knowledge or information that increased because of the discovery of new worlds, that in its own way altered our interpretation of reality. As an example, at that point in time, the majority of people still thought of the earth as flat. And then suddenly, relative to the discovery of new worlds, oh, it's round. At that point in time, the earth was considered to be the center of our solar system. Now we realize, of course, the sun is. And guess who promoted this realization? Primarily a fellow named Kepler. And yes, he was persecuted by who? Belief systems called the Roman Catholic Church. So if we bring it up to date, by the way, that was the very same time frame that Nostradamus manifested. 500 years ago. This man had, guess what, Plato and Sagittarius. And he made a whole lot of predictions, did he not? That brings us to this time frame. And, her, and his Pluto is at two degrees Sagittarius. Hmm, looks like some sort of return here. Now, if we bring it up into our context of our reality, in this time, many people on the earth understand that there are other forms of life that exist elsewhere than just the earth, what people like to call extraterrestrials or aliens. <laughs> Aliens according to who? <laughs> Compared to what? <laughs> it's like. Now, of course, certain percentages of the population have already had their own experiences, direct experiences. But because this is not occurring yet at a collective level, the majority of people judge Capricorn relative to existing belief systems. These people, as Uranus, bizarre but somehow they're psychologically fragmented off in their own little universe somewhere. Do you understand? So, if you look at it logically, Pluto moving to Sag, Neptune Uranus coming to Aquarius. Keeping in mind we all have a collective south node of Neptune in Aquarius. Now, I'm not making a prediction, but I will suggest. <laughs> <laughs> that it would not be unlikely within the next 15 years or so for these life forms that we call extraterrestrials to reveal themselves in mass to the collective organism. Now, let's assume that exists. Let's assume that it occurs, just for a moment. If, in fact, that occurred, could you see the incredible Platonian impact on confronting the nature of our existing belief systems and how we understand this thing called creation? Think about it. And then, therefore, how we are interpreting reality. Do you see the potential radical shift in consciousness that this could induce? Do you see the point here? Hmm? Why should in this respect also think of uh, things that happen that's what, in the other direction, I mean internally? Like, it's also the time that we, that all kinds of experiments are going on in what you call uh, cyberspace, in hybrid. That it's, 
in any way extraterrestrial, but then the other way around. It's like going into brain consciousness, whatever you want to call it. Would you place it in the same kind of perspective? Absolutely, because uh, the 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 the, the um, phrase I would use to 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 talk about what you're suggesting, I would call it cellular memory, memories that exist within ourselves, and a cellular memory has its own time. So now here comes a Pluto Sagittarius transit, relative to South Node of Uranus. In, a, in Sagittarius, and here comes a Neptune-Uranus transit relative to our collective south node of Neptune in Aquarius. Now what kinds of cellular memories linked with distant times might be unlocked in the collective organism? Jeff? Yes? Are you familiar with Ken Carey's book, The Third Millennium? No, I'm not. The point here is that, <clears throat> let's just stop here for a moment and put these two things in combination. Uh, number one, the discovery of new worlds relative to uh, extraterrestrials revealing themselves in mass, impacting on belief systems, impacting on interpretation of reality, impacting on our self-image in conjuncto with cancer. And then link this with Gaia, or nature, itself erupting relative to the, to the delusion of superiority in the human organism to Earth events. Now, if we just stop there and to put these two things in combination, can you see the reality that is probably going to be unfolding in this next 15 to 20 years? Uh, it's going to be at a remarkable time. You're also going to find, just like 500 years ago, that one of the potential phenomena that will occur relative to discovery of new worlds is the human organism's colonization of other planets. Right now, the human organism has the technology to make the planet Mars Earth-like. How they would actually do it, the technology involved, is to pump carbon monoxide into the existing atmosphere of Mars. And within 100 years, it would have an atmosphere duplicating Earth. Now project this and magnify it by how many planets? This is just a seed point. And how this would be progressively altering our belief structures. You understand the point here? Even now, what we like to deify as science cannot explain many natural laws. Simple example, the north node of Uranus its north pole, points away from our physical sun. And yet it is warmer than the south pole of Uranus, which points towards that sun. How does existing scientific theory explain it? They cannot. So this would tend to suggest that this thing we deify as empirical science is somehow not quite sufficient. So you can see what we're getting at here, yes? So I think at minimum we're looking at very exciting times. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then from another point of view, uh, Pluto's movement to Sagittarius, keeping in mind it deals the, in the end with that which is ultimately true, the issue of truth. Um, this then means on an individual basis, who is ever involved in their own living lie. That those lies will be revealed exactly for what they are, as a form of 
personal confrontation. This would then mean anybody who is wearing a mask that is not in harmony with who they actually are, that mask will be pulled off their face. That is not going to be necessarily a pleasant experience for many people. It's going to occur in many ways. There's no one way for anything. No, but there will be some. It can be something as simple as uh, you have an existing friendship and uh, there was somebody that you considered to be real and honest in these sort of things, and suddenly you come to find out that this friend is not coming from a place of honesty, and the mask comes off, and this makes a own kind of Platonian confrontation, which is not pleasant. Yeah. No, but for the person himself, not uh, the living person, but the living person himself, because uh, what I know is everyone has a mask, and uh, yes, uh, you can be conscious of it or not, you can uh, pull it or not. No, I disagree but with you. Your statement that everybody has a mask, mm -hmm. that's itself a generalization that you're calling a, a, a universal truth. Mm -hmm. That's one of the problems in Sagittarius, is to think that one's personal truth is a generalized truth for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, in fact, many people on the planet that are in absolute harmony with their inner essence, that yes. are not wearing any sort of mask. They're in they fact, are beautiful. Hmm? They are beautiful now. Yes, quite beautiful. And mm -hmm. there are in fact uh, people on our planet today who are still very much living in absolute harmony with natural law. Mm -hmm. There is an example, many tribes in the essence of the Amazon that are living like they lived hundreds of thousands of years ago. There are many percentages in the existing American Indian population that are trying to re return back to how they originally were. There are many of the Eskimos people trying to do the same thing. There are certain tribes and islands in the Philippines that are still living in this way. There is a matriarchal tribe in the north of Egypt that nobody even knows about anymore that are living like they lived 300,000 years ago. But we don't hear about this in our modern media. But these people still exist. I know from my own experience. I lived with the Navajo in this life a long time. And I was initiated into their religion called Peyote. And I understand what this issue of nature is about. The issue is that because we are happen to be in white skin, and we are conditioned in the way we are conditioned to our religions, that we now have self-created curtains or veils in our consciousness that did not allow a direct perception of what nature actually is. The tradition of the American Indians, specifically tribes like the Navajo, have vehicles, mechanisms, that allow these curtains and veils to be removed in such a way that the direct perception of nature occurs, in which one rapidly begins to experience that every form of the creation has a deity or a consciousness within it. And that once you remove the veil, Pluto, you develop an absolute communion, a one month, a merging with, in such a way that nature is the teacher, not another human be person. And these are many people still living this way. Yes, but I turn back uh, on my first question. Uh, we talk, uh, you talk now about the beautiful person. <laughs> the, I would say a natural person. Yes, natural, natural uh, person. Uh, there are only a few uh, in this world. But I, I, now I want to, to ask about the other, the many others, with masks, and you say <coughs> they have uh, the time is coming that they have to lose uh, their mask. Uh, and sometimes also in an unpleasant uh, way. The so issue goes back to where we start the lecture. We all have South Node of Pluto and Capricorn. 
the collective soul, the individual soul, the transition between the matriarchy and the patriarchy, the transition between natural way of living, natural law, and man-made inventions. And once we had this transition, called the patriarchy, the collective soul then learned to put on these masks. The reason that we had to put on the masks was in order to hide who we naturally are relative to the control of the patriarchy. This is now going to be a time frame in which those stupid masks come off. Oh. <laughs> no, hooray. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make intuitive sense to you. Intuitive sense. Maybe not left brain sense, intuitive sense. And see, this is the deeper issue Pluto going to solve. There will be a transference in our collective consciousness from left brain to right brain. We will learn to finally trust what we intuit. We will finally learn to own what we already know, even if we don't know how we know it. Then the, the intuitive brain is non-linear. It is image-based. It has nothing to do with time. It has nothing to do with empirical constructions. And what this time will be is a time of re-embrace in our right brain. With simultaneously Pluto, each person, as they do so, will suddenly begin to re-empower Pluto themselves. They'll begin to speak their truth. <laughs> now, one of the things that we can look at with the South Node of Uranus in Sagittarius and the collective Neptune South Node being in Aquarius, the North Node of the Uranus being Gemini, that the whole issue of computers uh, is going to magnify and intensify and in ways that we cannot anticipate. A simple example is what is now called the Internet. And we have many, many possibilities coming out of this. Uh, number one, Neptune, it will clearly demonstrate the international linkage of all peoples everywhere as they learn to be in touch or communicate with via the thing like computer, internet. This one fact will bypass governmental controls. So now we have created a mechanism in which the human person in mass collectively is Uranus detached from Capricorn, from government control. This will allow for increasing awareness, collectively speaking, of peoples everywhere. Do you understand my point? And the transference of knowledge, Sagittarius Gemini, back and forth at an international level, Neptune. This is the first time in human history that such a phenomenon has occurred. The very first time. Think of the consequences and the impact of this phenomenon. It becomes a potential vehicle of social revolution, Aquarius, through the detachment from the control of governmental structure. Do you see the point? Even now, as, a, as an example of this point, in the United States, there was an idiot senator who was trying to pass laws outlawing the Internet. <laughs> because they're realizing it's going to go beyond governmental control. Now, it also has a potential danger because Sagittarius is naturally square Pisces. And here we have the south node of Neptune, i.e. the ruler of Pisces. Here it sits in Aquarius, and here comes Neptune-Uranus transit. The potential danger, like Marx would point out, is that it has the danger of becoming the opiate 
of the people to become opiate, to become addicted to the computer, to focus your entire reality into this computer screen in such a way that this becomes your almost 24-hour day reality. There is a danger here. Uh, Who's punching the keys? <laughs> so the point is you can see some of the ramifications here. You also have clearly the symbolism because for many years now a certain percentage of people have been trying to develop what is called artificial intelligence with respect to the computer. Now look at the collective south node. We all have collective south node of Neptune, i.e. spirit, God, source of creation. In Aquarius, computers will correlate in astrology to Aquarius. Now here comes the Neptune-Uranus transit. At the same time, here comes Pluto transit to south node of our collective Uranus, south node, Sagittarius. Now what is the potential application in terms of actually evolving in a real way, which we can now call artificial intelligence. Meaning a computer that has a capacity to develop its own conceptions and the ability to be aware that it's a computer. Just like in the movie 2001, and you had the computer called Hell that was aware that it was Hell. What is the implication to the planet and the human species? Do you understand the point here? At this point in time, none of us can know. All we can do is look at the archetypes. And the issue is that uh, human person uh, has this thing we call free choice. Relative to choices, nobody can yet determine the outcomes. <coughs> Questions on these things? Yes? I think your answer, the answer to your question depends <clears throat> because when you use the word everyone, this implies every person on planet. Well, many people on planet are not, not living in modern industrialized nations. I think that the answer to your question is relative in the sense that for people who find themselves in industrialized nations, that the majority of such people will necessarily have to do this. For people who are still living in nomadic type situations, close to the earth, natural laws, they could care less. <laughs> There's no use. Their computer, so to speak, is to peer into fire. So, back here. Yes? As Pluto is entering Sagittarius, it's squaring the recessional point from Pisces into Aquarius, right? Mm -hmm. uh, may we uh, carefully predict quotes that everything related to the Piscean age will probably, with the square, rebel tremendously against any transition from Piscean age to Aquarian age? I'm thinking about Christian religion. Mm -hmm. What will happen progressively is that uh, the danger with Pluto and Sagittarius at a religious level, at a con with i.e. religion being the consensus, uh, given the fact that Pisces makes this score and so on, is that certain religions can become even more fanatical and even more extreme relative to the Sagittarian delusion of thinking that his view of reality is the only right truth. Now, 
the religion in question that is going to be most dangerous in our time is Islam. Because in this, many of these people are convinced that uh, if you're declared an enemy of Allah, then you have the right to kill such a person. So, last time the danger was Christianity, 500 years ago. But, so yeah, there is this danger of religions becoming fanatical. But in the end, like Christianity ended up doing, it blew itself apart. So, there is this danger for sure. Um, the issue within it comes to your question, Pisces, that uh, the Piscean age is in fact coming to culmination. And that means all the archetypes that have defined the Piscean age will come to a head so that the transition can occur. It must culminate. And this will then mean, as an example, relative to Western religions of a patriarchal nature, even Eastern religions of a patriarchal nature, the presumption and these teachings since their invention, not realization, invention, two different things, is that for spiritual growth to happen to consciousness, one must suffer first. And that suffering at a first cause level means to suppress the natural laws emanating from the human body. This doctrine has the, ba the basis of the presumption that spirit and flesh are in contradiction, which becomes a causative factor in patriarchal religions called hypocrisy. Now, take the example of the history, of the, the actual history of the Roman Catholic Church. How many people realize that this empire, the establishments of churches everywhere, was built on the back of prostitutes? How many people remember that there was a functioning brothel in the Vatican itself in the 13th century? How many people remember that many popes accessed prostitutes? How many people remember that the original male clergy from the first century to the 12th century has six or seven wives? And so on. So the point here is that Pluto and Sagittarius will reveal the truth. And as the truth is revealed, that, that which is not in harmony with natural law, including fanatical religions, will blow themselves up. Isn't there also a tremendous healing potential with the Pluto, with the Sagittarius? I'm sorry? Isn't there also a tremendous healing potential? Absolutely the point. Because to me, this is the ultimate reason why we all sit here with this dominant Cancer Capricorn axis reflected in these outer planets. We're going to go backwards to go forwards. This means what? It starts with a, an elimination, Pluto, of the false doctrine that flesh and spirit are in contradiction. Once we remove this false doctrine emanating from the Pisces age, then what is going to happen? Do you see my point right there? We've just eliminated a truckload of guilt. Okay. Yes? Does this also count for uh, like Satanism and, and sex in that order? Will, it, will, will they be uncovered also because of the of sex and Sagittarius? Say that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> you are saying all the religious doctrines will blow up finally. Does it also count for uh, Satanism and sex in that order? Will they also have to... Satanism and sex? <laughs> sex? 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 
<laughs> sure. <laughs> um, I'll put it to you this way. When you embrace nature and live it, and actually experience it, um, when the veils are removed, there is no such thing as hierarchies. There is no such thing as who is better, who is worse. There is no such thing as superior and inferior. Everything is perceived and experienced as co-equal and absolutely essential to the totality of the creation. So to answer your question in this way, sure. These sort of religions that have hierarchies and sex um, will be no more. So we're looking at this now collectively. But again, we all have personal reality.